Integrity Commission puts focus on implementing its gift management registry for 2020 to eliminate corruption. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Wednesday, December 18th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. The Integrity Commission is in the process of formulating a preventative corruption scheme called the Gift Management Registry. The registry will be done in collaboration with the Accountant General and will give public officers the opportunity to safeguard themselves against the possible corruption. Compliance Officer at the Integrity Commission, Mrs. Simona Dow Mitchell, says under the scheme, persons will be asked to declare their gifts to the Commission. She explained that gifts can be in the form of money, trophies and vehicles. Persons declaring is a sort of declaration process in a sense because what, for example, dignitaries may be traveling out of Grenada or so and they may get something. It's also part of our preventative corruption scheme. So for example, let's say someone from a public office went overseas and they would have received a gift. We're not saying that it is a bribe. We're not saying that it is anything dealing with fraud or so. But you're asking persons to declare that gift to the Integrity Commission. Is it gift as in monetary? It can be monetary be items. Yes, yeah, so whatever it may be. It can be a vacation for your family. It can be a brand new car. It can be a thousand dollar check. So any gift, whatever it may be. So the responsibility of that public officer is to declare this gift to the Integrity Commission. Following the declaration, the Commission will determine whether the gift is personal or state-owned. The Commission will also take into consideration gifts that were presented from foreign nationals. When the Integrity Commission decides, okay, based on probably the reason why the person would have received that gift or um, the value of that gift, and then uh, it will either go to the Accountant General or it may go to that person's office. For example, it can be a trophy. We also are sensitive to, for example, the Chinese persons. We know it is something cultural that you cannot um, refuse a gift because they may take it personal. And of course, we don't want to offend anyone. So the Integrity Commission um, is in the also understands that some gifts, we wouldn't expect for persons to refuse them because of the nature of it. She reiterated that the gift registry will be implemented as a preventative scheme against corruption. To safeguard yourself as a person and your integrity, you will present that gift to the Integrity Commission and then the Commission will decide what next to do with it. If you decide, if a process like this wasn't in place and you decide to keep that gift, um, Mr. A might come back and say, remember what I gave you, you know, and um, I need a little favor from you or my friend need a favor from you all that can be corruption so this process is a preventative process so it can save person's integrity public education on the registry will continue in 2020 Government will launch its new web portal on Thursday, December 19th as part of moves toward digital transformation. The new web portal will make government ministries and activities more accessible to the public and the diaspora. The launch will be held at the Grenada Trade Center Annex from 10 a.m. and will be streamed live on GIS Channel 22 and on Facebook via GIS.Government Information Service. Continuing with the news, men's javelin world champion Grenadian Anderson Peters on Wednesday made a courtesy call on Prime Minister Dr. the Right Honourable Keith Mitchell. Anderson, who is back on home soil for the first time since winning the world title in Doha on October 6th, while speaking with the Government Information Service after his visit to the Prime Minister, says his successes has to do in part with the tremendous support and guidance given to him by his day one coach, Paul Phillip. Coach Paul Phillip is always like always in charge of everything, basically. He, tells, like, he sends a program. Even though I'm not in Grenada, he get, writes my program tells me what to do, we communicate to the social media networks. So I send him back my training videos, like he corrected um, through the videos, which is pretty good to me. Technology, <laughs> like, can't yeah. beat it. He's able to like spot 
a lot of different things in, in the videos, like what I'm not feeling, what I'm not seeing in my throat for myself, he's able to see it on record. And we're able to like analyze it together and like find different things that we both didn't see. So uh, doing that has been pretty good to us. So we're going to continue doing it. The world champion says his underperformance at the World Games in 2017 was the impetus at which he worked physically and mentally to attain the championship title in 2019. During the, the, all the throws, like every round, I was telling myself that I'm going to become the world champion. Like I was looking at guys running up the throw and I was telling myself that I'm going to become the world champion. I'm the world champion. And then, like when the, when, like lining up for the last throw, I was like looking on the run and I was like, yeah, I'm the world champion. Because I'm the last person to throw. That's when you know for sure That's right. <laughs> he is the world it's champion. Yours. <laughs> so I can't, I can't, my mind kind of swayed a little bit. So I was running down the runway, smiling and everything. <laughs> Not too focused on the throw, but. It was a good feeling. Coach Paul Phillip, who has been the one in charge of Anderson's growth, applauded the commitment and efforts of Sports Minister Senator Norland Cox and his ministry for the assistance given in helping nurture and train Anderson into a now professional athlete. The ministry has been very good to us in, um, in allowing us to, to be using the facility at will. Okay. Um, at last suggest we we have keys to the building right. <laughs> and um, we call from time to time to ask for maybe we want to adjust something on the ground we never um, turn down they always say well okay go ahead once it's not okay. you know what I mean so the ministry has been supportive um, now with all the successes I think from 2015 2016 um, I can say that there has been a really, really good relationship developing up to, up to now. This is The National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Did you join the public service on or after February 22nd, 1985 and have since retired? This might be important to you. Government understands that the NIS pension may be insufficient to take care of your needs. So, while it awaits the court's ruling on the matter of pension for public officers, government has taken action to protect your quality of life so that you can take care of your needs in the meantime. Persons who join the public service on or after February 22, 1985 and serve continuously in an established position for a minimum 26 years and 8 months and retired at age 60 may be eligible to receive an advance payment which when combined with NIS, represents 70% of their last salary. For more information, call or visit the Pension Secretariat in the Department of Public Administration, Ministerial Complex, 440-3767. Welcome back. Over 20 agriculture workers and stakeholders were enlightened on the development of a proper business plan in an effort to ensuring the successful implementation and rollout of the Agricom project. We get more in this report from Karima Lewis. After some minor setbacks, the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands is forging ahead with its OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, Agricom, as it hosted a business plan development workshop for some staff members of the Ministry of Agriculture and other stakeholders. The Agricom project is a World Bank financed initiative geared at enhancing access to markets and sales for competitively selected farmers, fishers, as well as their allied aggregators and agro-processors. The one-day workshop, which was held on Tuesday at the Ministry of Agriculture's conference room in partnership with the Food and Agriculture Organization, was aimed at strengthening capacity to build business plans for farmers and other agriculture stakeholders. A total of 20 participants from inside and outside of the ministry benefited from the workshop. According to project coordinator Gregory Delsall, this workshop ties in well with component three of the Agricom project. This initiative that we're doing here today is part of component three and that is building capacity both within the Ministry of Agriculture and outside of the Ministry of Agriculture to do business planning because farmers are business people as well and agriculture sector people are business people, business people as well and they also need to plan for their business and business plan writing, business plan implementation, business plan development is part of what we 
aim to do to um, to strengthen the sector, to build the sector. Facilitator of the session, Juan Chez, who is Trade and Marketing Officer with the FAO, says this initiative is part of the first phase of implementation of the technical information package of the FAO towards the implementation of the Agricom project. He speaks on the importance of stakeholders seeing the project as not just one more project but part of a bigger landscape. The project in itself cannot achieve the objective that he had set by itself but it must work across actors, across sectors in order to add better value, to be more coherent you know, in the way that it is trying to address the different problems, to be more efficient in the use of resources, to be more effective in the achievement of objectives. So that's one of the main uh, messages and the main points that we are highlighting is the need for synergy and collaboration. He explains what he thinks should be the most important points participants leave with. We have to start with the market. So one of the main points that the international expert has been sharing with participants, and I think that they have been quite enthusiastic and receptive, is the need to understand the markets, how the markets are evolving. You know, we, we, we are at times of change that are very fast. There are many global trends that we need to understand in order to see what are the better opportunities for Grenadian agriculture and how we are, can set ourselves to take, to take advantage of those opportunities. Participant Jonathan Francis of the Southern Agricultural District gives his perspective on the one-day session. It is very timely and informative and is going to assist us because it has given us some guidelines or should we say some templates as to what we should use and how we should go about um, getting the results as quickly and as simply so that um, the business plan can be successful. For the Ministry of Agriculture, I am... Karima Lewis. Thank you, Karima. Finally, in the news, coaches and physiotherapists in Grenada will be exposed to new state-of-the-art technology and techniques to apply on injured athletes during sporting events in 2020. That's according to Sports Minister Senator the Honorable Norland Cox during his contribution to the 2020 budget. He said six doctors and trainers from the United States will be in Grenada for a two-day sports medicine conference on January 9th and 10th to engage sports personnel and therapists. This is all geared towards improving the organization and execution of sporting events going forward. This will be a conference where our physiotherapists, the doctors who work in, with, with athletics, our coaches, uh, they are going to be engaged from, with sports medicine doctors coming from the United States, six doctors and trainers coming from the United States, and we'll sit for two days to they'll be exposed to new techniques in terms of dealing with concussion, um, how to identify injury, how to treat those injuries to ensure that our athletes are better prepared uh, for the field of play. Mr. So President, we think this is a very important conference, and also we have given some commitment to have it as an annual uh, activity. Senator Cox said our athletes are performing exceptional locally and internationally, therefore there is need to improve how they are treated and cared for during and after an injury. There are new technologies, new, te new technologies. Why doctors were telling me, saying to me that they have a phone now, uh, 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 an X-ray unit, the size of a phone, they could go directly on the field with that and, and to check an athlete to see if something is wrong uh, with an extra portable X-ray. So that is the direction in which we are going, and we we welcome those developments, and we believe that this is a very important and important. Uh, conference that is going to happen early January, Mr. President. That story just ended the national report for today, Wednesday, December 18th. Let's recap the top story. Integrity Commission puts focus on implementing its gift management registry for 2020 to eliminate corruption. On behalf of the entire new team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.